wonderful world of Disney. Left, Kelly, left. Hop, hop. Right, Kelly, right. Hop, hop. That's Kelly. Good girl, Kelly. Hop, hop, Kelly. Right, Kelly. Right, Kelly. Sit, Kelly. Sit. Rest, Kelly. Rest, Kelly. You can rest now. And a girl, Kelly. <laughs> I'd like you to meet the leading lady on this program. This is Kelly. She's a C&I dog, and if she could tell her own story, I'm sure you would agree it's the most unusual dog story we've ever chosen to present. Kelly comes from the C&I school in Morristown, New Jersey, and we pay tribute now not only to her, but to her alma mater. Ever since 1929, this privately supported institution has been teaching dogs like Kelly to be companions and guides, actually seeing eyes for blind men and women. Now, not all guide dogs are seeing eye dogs even though people mistakenly think so. The true seeing eye dog comes only from Morristown. The name is a registered trademark. This philanthropic organization doesn't solicit funds. The American public has so generously supported it over the years that in 1959, the seeing eye found it could meet its responsibilities for the foreseeable future without asking for more money. The only cost to a blind person wanting a seeing eye dog is $150. In return, he receives his dog and room and board during four weeks of training at the school. Transportation from the blind person's home any place in North America and back again is also paid by the seeing eye. In a good seeing eye dog, it's not so much a matter of unquestioned obedience. It's a question of intelligence and temperament and sometimes judgment. And most important, a capacity to love. In this story, you'll see how Kelly has to learn to love three different masters. It's in three parts, and this first part, naturally enough, is called K for Kelly. Kelly, are you listening? <coughs> Your story started on a farm in New Jersey, remember? It wasn't a big farm. It looked like any other around. Early American, colonial house, the kind George Washington was always supposed to be sleeping in. But in a closer look, there was a difference. There hadn't been a plow put to those fields in years. And anybody could tell right away that those pens weren't for chickens or rabbits. No, this was a special kind of a farm because it raised a special kind of a crop. Anybody say those were just ordinary pups? Look like any other German shepherds. But same as the farm, there was a difference. These were born and bred for a special job, to help some people get around on their own, give them a chance to live a near normal life. When these pups grew up, they were going to be seeing eye dogs, eyes for the blind. As soon as they were up to it, we'd take them up on the hill for exercise. We knew they'd follow if we brought the mother along. And we had a regular trail we called the puppy walk. Of course, almost without fail, every litter seemed to have a tail end Charlie, one you had to keep an eye on. Come on, come on, stick together, everybody. No time for straying off. First time out, you had to watch these little fellows. As long as you could get their attention and keep talking to them, they'd stay up with you pretty well. But you couldn't let them out of your sight. And sometimes, you'd have to sort of help them over the rough spots. This, by the way, was the K litter. I guess I might explain that. You see, with so many litters coming along all the time, we needed a system to keep track of them. 
so we use the alphabet. First letter of the year was the A litter, the second B, and so on. And then each pup got a name beginning with that letter. For instance, these pups were Kathy, Kerry, Katie, Kevin, Corky, Kushla, and last but not least, Kelly. All born, as you might have figured, on St. Patrick's Day. The K gang was a likely looking lot, and I was proud of them. Just the kind of dogs the seeing eye wants. All except maybe Kelly. With her, I couldn't quite tell yet. Whenever there was any horseplay going on, it was generally Kelly that started it. Sometimes I wondered if she'd ever settle down, start paying attention to business, and stop playing the clown. At three months when Kelly had been weaned, it was time to start an important part of her training. She needed to get used to people, people besides me. I knew she'd miss the breeding farm, but I had a nice young fella picked out to be her new master. A brand new 4-H member named Danny Richards. Danny? Thanks, Mom. Now eat. Oh, go away, will you, Sassy? Go, go way back. Hi, Kelly. I think she likes me. Sure, Danny. All dogs want someone to love them. Oh, I do, more than anything. Well, that's the best start in the world. Danny's pretty excited this morning. Well, what's up? He doesn't quite know how to tell you about his 4-H project. Why? Well, he's getting a special kind of dog. A dog? Well, any kid can take care of a dog. What's a farmer's son going to learn raising a dog? He's raising it for the seeing eye. I think we should be very pleased that Danny was picked for this job. My first 4-H project was a prize beef. Put a lot of sweat into it, and it paid off. Kel, at Danny's age, everything doesn't have to pay off. You'll have his prize beef next year. Now, don't forget, the seeing eye has to know everything about Kelly. Keeping up her record is an important part of your 4-H project. I promise. <laughs> Got our feeding instructions. I'm available for any help you need, okay? Okay. You two are gonna get along fine. Yes, sir. You're on your own now. Good luck. Thanks, Mr. Boyle. And don't you worry. I'll make a real good seeing eye dog out of Kelly. You watch. You just make a real good dog out of her. That's all we ask. Besides, 
She's not used to living in a house yet. Well, she certainly makes herself at home. Well, better the kitchen than the living room, I suppose. Every youngster in the four race does something useful. Our boy plays with dogs. It was an accident. All puppies have accidents. But it sure got Kelly started off wrong. Anyway, the rest of the day went fine. <laughs> Except maybe when she dug a hole in the middle of the vegetable garden and took the meat we were going to have for dinner. Parents sure get upset about little things. Kelly, no! That summer whizzed by so fast, it was hard to know where it had gone. Kelly grew like a weed, and she was six months old, almost before I knew it. She wasn't really a puppy anymore, though she still had some puppy habits. For some reason, she liked chasing rabbits. She never caught one. She was too clumsy. And half the time, she couldn't even find one when it was right under her nose. <laughs> Sometimes she'd get real brave and take on Dad's cows. They'd stand for just so much and then decide they'd had enough of her. One particular day I think I'll never forget as long as I live. I don't think Kelly will either. That was the day she cornered a rabbit under the house, or thought she had. All I could say for her was that if she was supposed to be getting experience living with me, she was sure getting it the hard way. But I loved her anyway. And she'd learned to love me, too. By the time September came around, I realized I had a problem, as though going back to school wasn't problem enough. Kelly and I hadn't been separated once in all the time I'd had her. And now, how was I going to explain that she'd have to stay behind, that they didn't allow dogs in class? <laughs> By this time, I had her pretty well trained, and she was good at minding me if she felt she knew what I wanted. You wait now, and I'll be back as soon as I can. Remember now, you stay.
This is one day I could tell they had her puzzled. Because I'd never gone off and left her like this before. she got to town. We only know she made it. And we figure she must have been pretty confused trying to find someone she knew. It was only natural for her to strike up an acquaintance with another dog. But it wasn't until much later that we found out she'd met up with one of the seeing eye dogs. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. Would you go away? Would you would you get away? Good girl, come on. And left. 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 Hope. Hope. Forward. Hope. Go on now. Come on. Mr. Boyle said afterwards it was lucky she ran into one of the seeing eye instructors. Well, maybe it was, though I wasn't so sure. Because the next thing that happened, she bumped into the director of training for the seeing eye. Having trouble, Mr. Howell? Mr. Durant. Yes, sir, this stray's been following us since Park Place. Yes, I've been watching. The dog behaved well. Well, just now. Got a little fed up, I guess. And you didn't correct him? Well, the stray's bothering her, sir. I, I was going to correct her. This is a very common situation, Mr. Howell. And to be expected when your dog is leading a blind person. So he has to be prepared to meet it. If he allowed himself to be distracted, his master would be in some difficulty, you agree? Well, yes, sir. You must train him to pay absolutely no attention, no matter how much he's bothered. What if the other dog starts a fight? Takes two to fight. Yes, sir. Well, she's used to people. Quite a good dog, really. Still young. Oh, I wonder if it's possible. Oh, girl. Oh. Yeah, she is one of ours. She is? Yeah, bred at the puppy farm. See? There's her number. Yeah, she's being raised by one of the 4-H children. I wonder how she got here. Well, apparently she ran away. Continue, Mr. Owl. I'll take care of the dog. Yes, sir. Hop, hop, hop. Come on. Tell me, didn't she run away, Mr. Boyle? She tried to follow me to school. All the way to Morristown, Danny? Doesn't seem likely, son. But I'm sure she did. Anyway, I shouldn't have made her stay in the house. We're not trying to blame anyone, Danny. It's natural. Dogs wander off sometimes, especially when they're still pups. This won't count against her. Well, it may be an indication of her personality. That's why we ask you to keep a record. Give us a picture of her everyday behavior. Not all dogs are suited for guide work. Then this could affect her chances. Well, not all by itself, Mr. Richards. But if she runs away again, or if the record shows other problems... Like what? Well, if she's inclined to be skittish, or stubborn, if she's belligerent or scares easily... Kelly's not like that. At least I don't think so. Thanks for the coffee, Mrs. Richards. Oh, you're welcome. Come again. So long, Jim. 
Thanks for bringing Kelly back. That's okay, Danny. But don't forget to put this in a record. I will, Mr. Boyle. I promise. Mr. Boyle. Hmm? Oh. Thanks, Daddy. She didn't run away, Dad. Honest. Well, Danny, it looks like you're gonna have to tow the mark, too. I will. If you can't hold up your end, I'm afraid we'll have to give the dog back. No, Dad. Well, it seems to me you're handling Kelly wrong. All play, no work, making her irresponsible. But I've been trying to teach her. Not hard enough. Kelly's more than just your pet. She's got a big job ahead of her. You've got to prepare her for it. I will, Pa. She'll be ready, won't you, Bill? All right, Kelly, sit. <laughs> got about as many presents as the rest of us, because by now she was part of the family. Hey, it's a blanket. Come on, girl. That's female logic for you. Blanket for an animal with a built-in fur coat. Fur coat or not, she still gets cold. Well, Mom. Thank you, son. Hey, something else in your stocking, Kelly. From Dad. Well, it's Christmas, isn't it? Look, Kelly. Your own personal bone. says thanks, Dad. Sure. And thanks for everything. This has been the best Christmas yet. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't you uh, forget something? I did? Yeah. I know, I put it here somewhere. Yeah. Here it is. Thanks, Dad. Well, thanks a lot, Dad. Well, there's some good stuff in there, especially the chapter on sheep. Yeah, I'll bet. Danny, take this to the kitchen for me. Come on, Kelly. 
Honestly, honey, animal husbandry for Christmas? Well, the dog has to go back to the C&I come spring. Time he started thinking about his next project. But he'll miss her so. I suppose, but he can't keep her forever. friends. Well, they ought to be. Kelly's a shepherd. She's supposed to look after sheep, isn't she? enough exercise today. Back into the pen with you. Just one thing, honey. Now that we have it, what are we going to do with it? Or are you planning on going into the wool business? Oh, no. Uh, I figure he'll keep the uh, grass down in that north pasture we're not using. Well, it's going to be some time for he's big enough to be let out alone, much less keep the grass down. Who's going to feed him, take care of him till then? I will. Oh? Danny will be bringing Kelly back to the C&I in a couple of weeks so he can take over. Oh, yeah. Sure, Dad. Anytime you want. Let's go, girl. Okay, well, you're about as sensitive as a rhinoceros. Can you imagine how Danny must feel? Not too good, I guess. Good keep a dog for a whole year, and he learns to take care of it. He loves it. Now he has to give it away. He feels miserable. Well, he knew this was going to happen when he took over the project, and he agreed. He would have agreed to anything to have that puppy. Well, now, that's why I got him the lamb, to give him something else to think about, something much more practical. Practical. <laughs> You sure you don't want to go to the Davises with us tonight? No, thanks, Dad. I promised I'd take Kelly to the 4-H meeting so everybody could say goodbye to her. It's their last chance. By the way, I understand Jim Boyle isn't coming on Saturday. You want to bring Kelly to the seeing eye yourself? It's all right, isn't it? You can take me. Oh, sure. Any special reason? If, if I feel this bad now, think how bad Kelly's going to feel on Saturday. I figure it'll be easier on her if I take her there, instead of a stranger just taking her away. Well, that's good figuring, son. Dad? Mm hmm Kelly was awful good to the lamb today, wasn't she? Yeah. Remember when Mr. Boyle said that Kelly could flunk out on account of running away? Yeah. Well, if she did flunk out... That would be too bad, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, I, uh, I like to think we all have a special destiny. We're all put on this earth to do certain jobs, big or small. I think the same thing goes for animals. You, uh, you take Kelly there. Born and bred to help the blind. That would be a shame if she were kept from that destiny. Yeah. Wood.
By spring, Kelly knew the whole school routine. She'd see me off every morning, and she'd be waiting for me every afternoon when I came home. This is the last time you'll be seeing me off to school. I don't know about you, but I'll sure miss it. Danny, if anything had happened, we'd have heard by now, I'm sure. You'd think somebody would have seen him. Well, we'd have heard that, too. The important thing right now is they're expecting you to bring Kelly back to the seeing eye tomorrow morning. Don't you think you better call him? No. Not yet. She'll come home. I know she will.
that phone call? Just give me a little while longer, Dad. to the gravel pit, and the lamb got stuck in the conveyor belt, but Kelly got her out. And then the big steam shovel almost caught the lamb, but... Danny, do you know that all this happened? Well, not exactly. But it could have. Honest, it could have. We figured they got in the gravel pit, and Kelly... Write it the way you know it, son. But I don't know, Dad. And if I say she just plain ran away... You have to say what's right for her, as well as for yourself. Well, we got to be leaving in a few minutes. I know it looks bad, but Kelly ran away. Yesterday. Maybe you won't believe me, but the reason was to protect Dad's lamb and bring it back home. To me, this shows she's got responsibility and she'll make a real Fine, seeing-eyed dog. Keep your fingers crossed, Kelly. Come on, let's go. All set to go? Be a good girl and you do us proud, you here. Oh, she will, Mom. I'm sure she will. Are you all right, Danny? Of course. Try not to feel badly. I can't help it, Mom. <laughs> this is the way it's gotta be. Come on, Kelly. as much as he will. By the time we reached Morristown, I was feeling pretty bad about losing Kelly. I knew I'd miss her like everything, and I knew she'd miss me too. Proud of her. I'm proud of what she was going to be. Shh, Kelly. Take it easy, Kelly. That's what you'll be doing soon if you're lucky.
Richards, sir. Hope we didn't keep you waiting. But not at all. Mr. Durand, director of training. Mr. Durand. Mr. Richards, how are you? Fine. Matt Al, one of our instructors. How? How are you? This is Mr. Richards. Danny. Hello, Danny. Hi. Glad to meet you. So, young man, you brought us a dog. Yes, sir. A good dog, you think? The best. I wouldn't be surprised. Just from the look of her, I'd say she'd meet our requirements easily. But if she doesn't? Then you may have her back. Is that what you want? No. She's a seeing eye dog. And that's what I want her to be. Good. Will you take her now, Mr. Howell? Yes, sir. So long, Kelly. You show him now, huh? Come on, Kelly. Mr. Boyle, do you have a puppy at the farm for Danny? Ready and waiting. Thanks. But I... I'm going to camp this summer, so I couldn't take care of it. Well, if you ever change your mind, be one waiting for you. Thanks. Here's Kelly's record. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Danny. It just takes a little time. Well, he'll handle it. Bye now. Nice meeting you. See you. can understand. But what of the dog? She's also learned to love. But now it's over. She must forget and learn to love again. Not once more, but twice. We wouldn't ask this of a person, yet we expect it of her. It's a lot to ask. A lot to ask of anyone. Kelly's story began just as a lot of dog stories begin, with a pup and a boy becoming pals. But it won't end that way, for Kelly's case is different. Soon, she'll have to learn to love a new master. Wonderful world of Disney. Tonight, from the wonderful world of Disney, we present Atta Girl Kelly.
second part of our story is called Dog of Destiny. And it begins as Matt tries to make friends with her. Hello there, Kelly. How you doing, girl? Huh? Yeah, I know, I know. You miss Danny, didn't you? Well, you don't have to worry, girl. Things will get better. If you let him. About feeding time, Mr. Howe. All right. Thanks. Come on, girl. Come on now. This is the beginning. And there's the end. Kelly's destiny. To be eyes for a blind person. In between, training, my job. Teaching her how to become those eyes. I need six, Carl. Help yourself. Two more coming out. Hey, the natives are restless tonight. The natives are hungry. Here, Carl. Hey, what's on the menu? Same old thing. Carl, I keep telling you, dogs are like people. They gotta have variety. Ain't heard of them complaining. Well, but a really inspired chef would create some new dishes, like uh, kibble a newbert. Oh, um, dog meal sautéed in mushrooms. Huh? Come on, use your imagination, Carl. How about more get up and less gab, MacGyver? Oh, yes, sir, Sergeant. Right away, Sergeant. Sounds like Gruber's had a bad day. Yeah, he's having trouble with a couple of his dogs. Hey, when's Duran gonna give you a string? There's some new dogs in quarantine now. Good luck. Hope you get them. Thanks. I like the looks of that Kelly. And there are a couple others, too. But of course, for now, they have to stay in quarantine until we're sure that they have nothing that will infect the dogs already in training. Hi. Have I got something good for you? Yeah. There you go. That's good stuff, huh? <laughs> you like that, don't you? Here you go. There you are. Here you go. Aren't you hungry? Come on, that's good food. Go, go ahead, eat. Good girl, that's a good girl. Here you go. Good boy. Hi, Kelly girl, how are you? Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on. Nothing new about all this. A homesick dog is a dog without an appetite. Yeah, I know. Pretty tough, isn't it? You just like all the rest of them, pining for somebody who's not here. Come on now, eat up. And you're so right. It is a rough way to start a new life. Come on now. Come on. Now comes inspection by Mr. Duran, our training director, and Mr. Wilson, one of our training supervisors. And no dog show judges ever examined an animal more closely. Now this is Kelly, last year's K litter at the breeding farm. Oh, yes. Brought in yesterday, wasn't she, by that boy, uh, Danny? Danny Richards. She was his 4-H project. And his first dog. Parting with her was very difficult for him. She's a good size and weight. She would appear to have the necessary strength and endurance. Alert, but not skittish. On the surface, very good dog. You agree, Mr. Wilson? Definitely. Best with a lot, I'd say. But beneath the surface, you read the report the boy left? Fairly standard, except for having run away. Having run away twice, Mr. Wilson. This is the dog we found in town last fall. You, uh, you remember Mr. Howell? Yes, sir. The boy had a fairly reasonable explanation for the second time. 
Youth can be over-imaginative. Besides, he loves the dog. He wouldn't want it to fail. Well, it seemed a waste to knock her out just because of that. Oh, don't mistake me. The dog's quite acceptable to me. For the moment. No, I'm merely indicating a possible source of trouble, what I feel to be a certain sense of irresponsibility, which, of course, won't do. No, she must be watched closely. Very well, Mr. Howell, thank you. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Duran. I was just, uh, just wondering if, uh, seems to me I'm ready for a string of my own. I thought maybe one of these dogs here... That, uh, will be decided at today's meeting, Mr. Howell. Oh, yes, of course, sir. The vet will be here in about an hour. Give the dog his shots. Right. Kelly hasn't exactly passed with flying colors, but at least she can begin her seeing eye training. And I bet it's the last thing in the world she cares about right now. A session with a veterinarian is necessary, but it's a rather unhappy moment for the dog. Good girl, man. Good girl, Kelly. Come on. Good girl. Nope. Come on. Be a good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Easy now, Kelly. Just take a minute. Just take a minute. Good girl. All right, you hold it steady now, Matt. It's only take a second. Okay. Easy now, Kelly. It's all over now. Hey, Doc, before you go, you look at my new pup. She has an earache, and I've got... Hey, grab her! Kelly, come back! Come back here! Kelly? Come here, come here. Kelly? It's all right, Mr. Howell. The gate's closed. She can't get loose. Kelly! Kelly! Sorry, Matt. That's all right. I know where she's going. trouble. They might not take you back now. Well, don't worry. We'll find her somehow. She won't go too far. Thanks for the coffee, Mrs. Richards. I'm sorry I bothered you, Mr. Richards. I was sure that dog come back here. Well, no trouble at all. You know, if you could just wait a few minutes, at least until Danny gets back from school, he, uh, well, they may be able to help you. Well, a few minutes won't matter, I suppose. I've got no other clues. You know, Kelly's my first dog. First one I've handled right from the beginning. I had such Sammy. high hopes for her. How do you know you'd be here? Stay. You know, it's, it's funny how you think you got a dog all figured out, and then first thing you know, they'll surprise you with some little stunt you never thought of. No, Kelly. Now's no time for a walk. Rest. You have to go back, you know. But nothing wrong with waiting till tomorrow, is there? That's what you'd like, wouldn't you, Kelly? Anyway, 
Maybe this whole thing's wrong. Maybe you just aren't cut out to be a seeing eye dog. I'm afraid I have to be gone. Well, Danny should be here any minute. Uh, if Kelly was going to turn up, she'd have been here by now. Too bad. She would have been great. I just know it. Then this will affect her chances? Affect them? Kelly has a history of running away. Mr. Duran's already leery of her. I was just hoping I could get her back before I found out. Maybe you still can. Hey, he found her! Huh. And himself, I think. Hi, Mr. Howe. Look who came to see me. Ah, uh, Kelly. Here, Kelly, come on. Be a good girl now. Thanks, Danny. Yeah, she went to the farm. Too bad you went to all that bother. is unimportant, Mr. Howell. The fact remains that it did happen. The dog ran away, and for the third time. Couldn't we look at it the other way around, Mr. Duran? I mean, Kelly wasn't running away from us as much as she was running to Danny Richards. But after all, she can't be expected to forget him right away. True. But will she ever forget? Well, that's up to us, isn't it? You keep hammering it into us that the whole foundation for seeing eye training is a dog's love for its master. Well, that only works if a dog has a capacity for love and can give it. I feel Kelly just proved that. Now, all we have to do is just transfer that love. All we have to do? You make it sound very simple. I'm sorry, sir. I know it isn't, of course. It's, it's just that I feel Kelly deserves another chance. Obviously. This morning, you asked about a string of your own. You were already scheduled for a pair of dogs. We simply hadn't decided which ones. Any preference? Yes, sir. I, uh... Well, I, I feel that you'd know best. Well, let's see. Robin, the yellow Labrador, should do well with you. As for the other, since you seem to feel so strong about her, the shepherd, Kelly. Thank you very much. I'm not doing you any favor, Mr. Howell. At least not with the shepherd. No, I have strong reservations about her. One more mistake and she'll have to be dropped. Well, we'll just do our best, sir. I'm sure. It's time for the afternoon feeding, Mr. Howell. Yes, sir. And thanks again. the new dogs move out of quarantine and into their training quarters. And we spend the first couple of days just getting used to each other. I have to learn all about them, their temperament and individual characteristics. The best way to get the most out of them. Robin is pretty easy to figure. All she wants is attention and affection. Kelly, come on. But right now, there's no room in Kelly's life for anyone but a young boy. It's going to be a job to crowd him out. I have to make all the moves. I'm the only one who feeds her. I even prepare the food myself so she gets only my scent. Oh, come on now. That's real good stuff. Come on now. Kelly, come on. She has to learn to depend on me and trust me.
Atta girl, Kelly. When it finally happens, it may only be the slightest gesture on her part, but it's the first step in the right direction. She's beginning to accept me as a friend. Kelly, come. Kelly, sit. Good girl, good girl, yeah. Kelly, down. Good girl, good girl. Kelly, sit. Good girl, good girl. Okay, Kelly, stay. Kelly, come. Kelly, sit. There you go. All right, that'll do it. Oh, very good, Mr. Howell. Thank you, sir. The dogs show promise, especially the uh, Labrador. Yeah, she's ready for town. Well, how about Kelly? She did fine. Maybe too well. As if the lessons were too easy for her. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, is there, sir? Easily learned, easily forgotten, Mr. Howell. She enjoys the work now. It's fresh and new to her. But when it becomes dull and repetitious... And you don't feel she's ready for town yet? Do you? Oh, yes, sir. Well, on the basis of what she's just shown us, I'm afraid I have to agree with you. But if she hasn't forgotten the boy... Oh, she has, sir. Your responsibility, Mr. Howell. You can begin training as soon as they're accustomed to the harnesses. Yes, sir. And thank you, sir. You keep thanking me, Mr. Howell. I hope you're not being premature. Talking to Duran this afternoon. How'd it go? All set for Morristown. Congratulations. As soon as you're finished, I'd like to ask you something. Hey, well, go ahead. He'll be all night. Now, you've been here a lot longer than I have. Have you ever seen Mr. Duran sort of pick on a dog, take a dislike to it for no reason? No. I can't say I have. Shh. Well, how about you, Gruber? Have you ever heard Duran pick you on a dog? Listen, give up, will you? Why, any trouble? I don't see any, but he's so down on Kelly for no reason at all. Kelly, the shepherd that ran away. Yeah, that looks like she'll never live it down either. She been working all right? Perfectly. Well, there was a problem for a while. You know, as usual, she couldn't forget the boy, but I got that look now I'm positive. And what are you worried about? I don't know. MacGyver, I'm ready. I'm sorry I interrupted you. How? Yeah. Word of advice. Durant never does anything for no reason at all. Thank you. Check. And mate. Hi, Kelly. How's my girl? Are you really my girl? Huh? Come on. Yeah, I know. Funny time for a workout, isn't it? But we need it. Both of us. I didn't notice it before, but Kelly's attention seems to be wandering. I just can't figure it out. I get it. The gate. She remembers it. That's where she ran away. Beyond that gate lies freedom and the chance to rejoin Danny. Well, 
Well, this is a matter we're going to have to settle once and for all. But I know I must let her decide. Kelly, come. Come to me. Come on, girl. That's the way. Yeah, good girl. It helps to know that Kelly is with me because now new lessons, a new schedule, and new surroundings. into Morristown, where we begin the actual seeing eye training. The classrooms are the city streets, but this definitely is a school of experience. One of the first lessons Kelly must learn is how to handle sidewalks and curbs. And to make the point clear for her, I have to pretend I'm a blind man. To her, of course, a curb is nothing, just a simple step up or down. But for me, playing her blind master, she has to learn to stop and wait till I can locate it before proceeding. We go back and start over. Repetition is part of the pattern. I can practically count on the fact that she will overshoot the mark again. And so I exaggerate my fall. Fooey, I say. The word sounds unfriendly, and she wants to please me, so she asks herself, what have I done wrong? Very quickly, she senses that curbs, for some strange reason, are a problem for me. She reassures me, and I, in turn, reward her with affection. Next time, she plays it safe and stops well back. She's learning, maybe a little too fast. But now she must be taught to lead me right to the edge before stopping. Every time she does it right, I praise her. Atta girl, Kelly. And this is what she wants most of all. The next phase is to walk the problem in reverse. The fact that a cat distracted her is no excuse. Cats are curves. She must learn to pay attention at all times. Now she remembers. She lets me find the curb with my foot, and we do it right. Gradually, she gets it down to a fine art. And I'm pleased with her progress. Next comes the matter of crossing the street in traffic. Now, I must teach her to use judgment and her own instinctive sense of safety. Curb, she has learned well, but what about the middle of the street? By prearrangement, a car crowds close. I bang on the fender, and this frightens her. And she sensibly decides these noisy contraptions are things to be avoided. We demand a lot of a seeing eye dog, very often in the area of almost human judgment. An important lesson is this one, how to spot overhanging objects, a tree limb, an awning, a clothesline that might harm the master. Kelly must always know when to go around. Today, Kelly must go around on her own because I'm taking the blindfold test with Mr. Duran. Today, Kelly must demonstrate what I've taught her. For the first time, she's expected to be a seeing-eye dog. Mr. Durand isn't making it easy for us. He's testing us thoroughly with special problems. The more or less routine checkups came earlier with my training supervisor. 
But now, Mr. Duran wants to know if Kelly can handle a completely unexpected situation. steps across my path, half blocking my way, I know that there's something out of the ordinary ahead. She can't tell me what it is. She can only tell me it's there. But once I know the size and shape of the problem, the rest is easy. minor faults, but nothing that can't be corrected with a little work. No, on the whole, she performed exceedingly well. Far better than I expected. Yeah, she licked her problem, sir. The boy? Yeah. But she wouldn't have done it without your help, Mr. Howell. Very well. Continue on the regular schedule. Hey, come on, Kelly, come on. She'll be tested again in a month or so. Any time, sir. You know, Mr. Howell, I get the impression you'd like nothing better than to make me eat my words about this dog. Well, well... <sighs> well, if I must, I assure you it'll be a most satisfactory meal. Come on, Kelly. Next come some of the finer points. In certain areas, dogs riding on public conveyances must be muzzled, and so Kelly is taught to live with this regulation. Her purpose is to help a blind person lead a near normal life, and that means traveling on buses and trains. It means going shopping in stores and going to market. It means using things like revolving doors and elevators. I take turns with my dogs. Kelly one trip, Robin the next. And day by day, they keep getting better and better. Robin and Kelly, two of the best. That's what I think. But of course, more important is what Mr. Duran thinks. Hey, how goes it? OK so far. Come on, Kelly. Hey, what's the idea? Weren't you out with her already? Of course, she can use the work. And Mr. Duran's testing her again next week. Well, from what I've seen of her, you're just gilding the lily. She couldn't do any better if she could talk. See you back at school. Come on. Maybe McIver's right. Kelly's been doing beautifully. She's ready for that test right now. Watch it, girl. That's strange. Kelly hasn't overrun a curb and I don't know how long. I wonder what's the matter. That ought to be automatic by now. What distracted her? Maybe she's not as ready as I thought. Mr. Duran asked me to tell you, he's scheduling tests for both your dogs day after tomorrow. So soon? Well, two of Gruber's dogs are sick. There's a new class coming in at the end of the week, and if your dogs are ready, Mr. Duran wants them as replacements. Oh. Okay. Hey, don't go out of your mind. Huh? This is what you've been waiting for, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, well, how about one small hooray, or at least a jump for joy, huh? Hey, Matt, if your dogs aren't ready yet, just They're ready. Don't. Everything will be just fine. 
Looks like I'm no better off than when I started. Kelly's working perfectly. Maybe I'm making too much of a couple of small mistakes. That can't be it. Why should a school bus distract her? Kelly, up, up. Up. Kelly, sit. Sit. <laughs> So that's it. That bus, to her, means Danny Richards. She hasn't forgotten. Well, I asked for it. I wanted to know why. Now I'm worse off than before. Kelly, right. And that's what it was every time. A school bus distracted her. You've been working Kelly in town three months. Why should they upset her now? All of a sudden. They've just started running again. Uh, fall term opened last week. That's right. And I told you Danny Richards, the boy who raised her, he was on one of them. When she lived with Danny on the farm, she probably saw him ride a school bus every day, so now she associates buses with him. It's lucky you saw him or you still wouldn't know. Lucky? At heart, she's still Danny's dog. That's why she kept watching the buses. She was looking for him. No, not necessarily. Could have been like an old memory, that's all. And it might fade out altogether with time. Well, buses aren't the problem. It's the boy, Danny. And he's no old memory. He's real. The test is tomorrow. What are you going to tell Durand? Nothing. Maybe I can still work this out with Kelly. I just asked for a postponement. Durand is going to want to know why. Especially since you've been pushing for it. Yeah. Me and my big mouth. Well, I just have to take my chances, that's all. Hey, if I time it right and work Kelly before school gets out, maybe she won't see a bus. Or Danny. What'll that prove? She'll pass the test. How? Oh. What? What about them? They're not interested in tests. They just want a dog they can depend on. If Kelly isn't ready for you, is she ready for them? That, I'd say, was check and mate. Very well, Mr. Howell. Are you taking any particular route? No, I thought I'd just freelance. As you wish. Come. You're facing north now toward Park Place. So whenever you wish. Oh, Mr. Durant? Yes? If she doesn't check out perfectly, I mean, if she just makes a couple of mistakes, she can be held over for another class, can't she? Well, that depends on whether they're simply mistakes or basic faults. Kelly, forward. I decided this morning I'd give Kelly the toughest workout a guide dog ever had. Crowds, heavy traffic, any and every challenge I could find. That would make up for not exposing her to a school bus or Danny Richards. I make it a point to head for the railroad station, one of the toughest problems in town. It's as though the place were designed on purpose to test a seeing eye dog. Up, up. We work here simply because it's so difficult and because many of our blind students must commute to their jobs from stations just like this. In other words, Kelly must know how to cope with it. I moved to the edge of the platform. On seeing the train, Kelly
Charlie decides we're too close. My safety is her first concern, and her judgment has been excellent. There are times in the training of a seeing eye dog when we seem to be running an obstacle course. And to tell the truth, we are. This time it's Kelly who tells me by her behavior that the obstacle is there. should be more than enough for Mr. Duran. I can head back now. It's three o'clock and school's out. I could still duck the school and Mr. Duran would never know. How about I would? And how do I prove Kelly's as good as I think she is if I don't give her a fair chance? Lost your bearings, Mr. Howell? No, sir. I was just trying to decide which way to go from here. Well, straight ahead leads to the school, or left will take you back to Washington Street. Yes, I know. Kelly, forward. I should have my head examined. If we run into Danny Richards, how can I expect Kelly not to go to him? or want to stay with him. It's asking the impossible. Up, up. Just fine. This is a very important test, Danny, and we have to keep going. Oh, sure. Sorry if I did something wrong. Oh, no, it's all right. Well, so long, Kelly. You do good now, here. such a difficult test. Well, she got off on the wrong foot when we started training. Guess I just wanted her to make up for it. But you seemed so worried when you began. Were you afraid she might fail? Well, there were a couple of shaky minutes. Yes, the situation at the school was unusual, but she carried it off well. The boy distracted her. Of course. Called her by name. Naturally, she responded. Well, that won't count against her then, will it? She stayed right by your side, didn't she? Obeyed your commands? Yes, sir. What more can you ask? She'll face this with a blind master also. People will pet her, make a fuss over. Of course, they shouldn't, but some people can't seem to resist. She's learning not to be upset by it. But if you were concerned, why did you go past the school? I had to be sure about something. Had to be sure about the boy? Yes, sir. Yeah, I had to know whether Kelly was my dog or his. I understand. We ask a great deal of these dogs. But you've done your job well. Kelly's loyalty was certainly all yours. Yeah, thank you, sir. She's a great dog. Well, that I grant. You'll remember my earlier reservations about her. Yeah, I'm afraid so. That's what made the school test so important. 
There's something perhaps I should tell you, Mr. Howell. Danny Richards called me yesterday. He did? Yes, he called to ask for another puppy. Oh. He also mentioned that he'd seen you and Kelly on the street. You knew all the time? I'm certainly glad you decided to go past the school, Mr. Howell. So am I. It's a good feeling knowing I have Mr. Duran's approval. That means a lot. But I think I'm proud of Kelly most of all. And suddenly I remember. This is the day the blind students arrive to begin their training. That means a whole new scheme of things. It means that one of these strangers will soon have Kelly. Just which one is pretty much up to Mr. Duran. And I'm, I'm sure he's sizing up the new candidates even now as he goes over to welcome them. I find myself sort of half envious. Who will it be? And I realize it doesn't really matter who. What's more important to me and Kelly is that I'm about to lose her. And she's about to lose me. And this will be the second time that she's lost her master. Ah, oh, Kelly girl, do you think you can do it? Forget me and learn to love somebody else? But I know you manage somehow. And I'll never forget you, not as long as I live. And challenge it is when Kelly must face the toughest adjustment yet. Learning to love a man who is not only a stranger, but blind. Wonderful world of Disney. Tonight, from the wonderful world of Disney, the final episode of Atta Girl Kelly. Sir, be right there. Kelly, what are you doing now? Go on. Go on. Mr. Howell? Yes, sir. 
You know, this will be a very difficult time for your dog. So the sooner you begin to break her, the better. The breaker? Of you. Oh. Yes, sir. I know our director of training is right. I will have to let Kelly go. It's time to end our partnership. It won't be easy, either for her or me. Kelly, rest. Now stay, Kelly. For Kelly, this is another ending and another beginning. She's finished her seeing eye training and is ready for her third master, the one she'll spend the rest of her life guiding and taking care of, a blind person. This door on our left is the telephone booth. And now we're back in the main lobby. Mr. Duke, will you show Miss Norridge into the recreation room, please? I'm sorry to keep you waiting. You're just in time. Excuse me. Gentlemen, I'd like you to meet your instructor, Mr. Howell. This is Mr. Clayton. Glad to know you, Mr. Howell. Uh, same here, Mr. Clayton. And Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams. Glad to have you. Good to be here, Mr. Howell. And now, gentlemen, there's a lot to do. So Mr. Howell will take you to your room and you can get settled. Where will you put me this time, Mr. Durant? Number four, I think you remember it. Of course, my old room. You'll share it with Mr. Williams. Good. All right, Mr. Howell. Now, we're in the lobby now. If you turn this way, down the hall, you'll find yourself at the foot of the stairs leading to your room on the second floor. You want to bet I reach a dead on? Mr. Clayton is back with us for a second dog, and this makes him the old hand. It's good to see him sure of himself. Confidence helps a lot. Now, Mr. Williams, straight ahead. Now left and down the hall. Good. Mr. Williams, on the other hand, is a first timer. Like all newcomers, he's a bit confused about things, but he'll learn. Now keep on the rug, Mr. Williams. Doing just fine, Mr. Williams, just fine. Try to stand the carpet. And the stairway is straight ahead. All right. How's that? Couldn't be better. Now, uh, seven steps, a landing, uh, three steps right, another landing, and then seven more steps. Another six. Uh, make a liar out of me for one step. gentlemen. Now, uh, you're facing... Wait, the... don't tell me. We're facing the window. Uh, the beds are on this side. Chest of drawers over here. Another chest. The closets. How am I doing? Fine. Hey, hey there's, a, there's a small chair there. <laughs> don't worry. My shins remember it well. Anything new or that I've forgotten? No, no, you're right at home, Mr. Clayton. Come on, Mr. Williams, I'll give you the grand tour. That's okay. I can find my own way. I can help Mr. Williams when he needs it. All right. Uh, your suitcases are on the beds. Mr. Williams, that's the one you're sitting on right now. Unless you'd prefer the bed near the window. <laughs> the view sure won't mean anything to me. Well, maybe we can't see it, but personally, I like knowing it's there. Then you keep that bed. Thanks. All right, uh, you have one hour before the indoctrination meeting, so uh, I'll see you later, all right? Right. The uh, chest of drawers between the beds will be handy for you. I'll use the other one. Sit yourself. First time you've been here, isn't it, Mr. Williams? First time I've been blind. I know they're supposed to be good, but I don't figure a seeing eye dog can help me go off tackle again. Maybe not, but if you asked it, I bet it would try. 
So, you're a football player. Was. We each have a closet. I'll take the one in the corner. Okay. You sure know the ropes here? Well, I should. This is my second time around. I've already had one dog. And it was okay? What was okay? What with your dog? I mean, the seeing eye business works. You got going again. You could do things. What do you want me to tell you, Mr. Williams? The dog made my life the same as it was before. I could see you again. Oh, no, of course not. It's just that they said everything would be better. It can be. A dog can give you freedom. A chance to get out on your own. A life for yourself that isn't dependent on other people. And the rest is up to you. What you want to do with that life. What I want to do with it. Give it to my worst enemy. That crying towel of yours must be just about soaked through. Now look here, I asked you I a few can't questions. Look any more than you can. But I'm listening. Where'd you say the chest is? Between the beds. You found it. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Clayton. They like a certain amount of formality here, but I don't see any reason why we can't drop the mister while we're in our room. That is, if we're going to be roommates. Okay, by me. Okay. My name's Evan. Charles, Chuck. Right, Chuck. Stop worrying. As soon as you get your dog, everything will be better. Hello, Mrs. Dickens. Nice to see you again. Oh, hello, Mr. Duran. And uh, nice to see you. Thank you. How's your room, Mr. Williams? Oh, it's fine. Thank you very much. Good. Mr. Ladies and gentlemen, it's customary for me as director of training here at the Seeing Eye, the principal of the school, so to speak, to give you a brief idea of what's ahead of you during the next four weeks. Well, first off, we're glad to have you with us. We believe that we can help you. And I might warn you right now that you'll be very busy during these next weeks. Tomorrow morning, your instructors will take you for a walk in town, start you learning the streets. Tomorrow afternoon, This is the beginning the for the students. Mr. Duran's oh, indoctrination. You've been waiting for. A straight from the like shoulder talk about what they're to expect and beforehand. what's expected of them. We've known your With understanding, but no sentimentality or pity. And we've made it a point. Their blindness is a fact, a dog, you however personal. unfortunate. Both inside, but these men and women have faced that fact and are ready to deal with it. Your dogs, Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. Will begin in earnest. Nor would the seeing eye be able to help them. And finally, let me make one thing very clear to you. Your dog is not a house pet. Neither is it a machine. It's your partner. And you must work together. You give it care and affection. It will help you to help yourselves. Giving you independence, and dignity. So that's enough talk. Now it's time to go to work. Mr. Williams, can you stand up, please? Yep. Yes. Uh, you go, uh, Thank you. Straight ahead. Right. Yes, I think I know the way. Right. Mr. Carl, One of the first things the blind student is taught is the purpose of the guide dog's harness, the channel of communication between dog and master and holding it properly becomes very important. You don't think I'd forget, do you, Mr. Howell? Four word. How's that? Well, it's pretty close to perfect, except you're, you're holding your leash a little too tight. Oh, that's the way Jenny liked it. She was my first dog. Yeah, I know. What kind of a dog am I going to get this time? A shepherd, her name's Kelly. Oh, Jenny was a boxer. Wonderful dog. Four word. Accustomed to spending a lot of time with me, Kelly, I know, probably wonders where I've been all day. I'm sure Robin does, and the others. 
They miss the affection and the attention. It's not easy to fool dogs as smart as these, especially Kelly. How can I explain it to her? That tomorrow she'll be assigned to a new master. I know I'm not supposed to see her like this, but well, Kelly was my first dog, the first one I trained right from scratch. And I can't very well let her go without saying goodbye. Good night, Kelly. She likes me. Of course, you were worried over nothing. Yeah, sure, Robin. You're my girl. From now on, it's you and me, just the two of us. You may take her to your room now. Okay. Come on, Robin. Uh, to your right, Mr. Winters. That's it. Oh, would you send in Mr. Clayton? Don't you think? Yes, sir. Now sit over here, please, Mr. Howe. Kelly, come. Yes, sir. Oh, come in, Mr. Clayton. There's a sofa about three steps to your right. Thank you. There you are. Your dog's name is Kelly. Hamburger. And remember, offer it to her when she comes to me. Call your dog, Mr. Clayton. Kelly, come. Kelly, come. She, Mr. Durant? Black, mostly, shading into gray. You are bigger than Jenny. I guess you won't be able to use her harness. No, Kelly. Sit. Good girl. You can take her to your room now and get acquainted. Right. Kelly, heel. Come, Kelly. Now to your left, Mr. Clayton, and straight ahead. Thank you. Come, Kelly. That's it. What would I do now? How would I feel if I were rejected by my master and turned over to a stranger? Again, Kelly is being asked to forget someone she loves and learn to love another. For the last time, yes, but how can she know? And maybe this is one time too many. Ready to turn in, Chuck? Uh-huh. Where's that chain? Right near your bed, at the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah, here it is. Come on, Robin. Floor for you. What was that? Hmm? What? That noise, a clip. I just turned out the light. That's funny. Having a light on for us. <laughs> oh. Makes things seem a little more normal. I suppose. <laughs> well, good night. Good night, Chuck. Than that. <laughs> Not a 
Not on the bed. Just lie down. That's it. Good girl, Jenny. What'd you say? Hmm? You called her Jenny. No. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty stupid of me. Sorry, Kelly. Good night. How well do you remember Morristown, Mr. Clayton? Oh, quite well. Jenny and I used to know it like a book. This is Bank Street, isn't it, where we used to start? All right. But remember, it isn't Jenny anymore. Kelly, Kelly. Here, Mr. Williams, let me give you a feel of the town. Helps to have it in your mind. Now, you feel this little notch here? Yes, sir. Well, that's Bank Street. Now run your finger down to this corner and go right angles. That's Maple Street, where you work today. The students have only four weeks at the seeing eye, so every minute counts. Once they have their dogs, they go right into training on the streets of Morristown. Maple Street is the beginner's course, a quiet residential street without much traffic. The dogs have all trained along here previously, and they know this part of town well. The first and most important thing is to get the team accustomed to each other, to get the feel and the rhythm of moving together. At first, of course, there are bound to be some miscues and some missed signals, and the dogs have to bear it all with considerable patience. Like any beginner, Chuck Williams makes many mistakes, and sometimes Robin seems exasperated. If she could talk, I imagine she'd say, I'm trying, can't you do something with him? But Chuck has an athlete's sense of timing, and I can see he's beginning to get the hang of it. No doubt about it, he and Robin will make an ideal pair. Evan Clayton knows exactly what to do and when to do it and handles Kelly very efficiently. If there's any problem, it's Kelly. She keeps turning to me as if looking for approval and affection, but I can't give it. Kelly is Evan Clayton's dog now. Watching and working with the two men, I realize I must not interrupt too often. I must not distract the dogs whose affection right now leans more toward me than toward their new masters. It's important that they work out their own sense of communication. As always, the whole basis must be trust and love. I begin to see it working in Chuck's case. More and more, Robin has developed the responsible attitude so natural to a seeing eye dog. She's alert to every obstacle, and in Morristown, we purposely go where obstacles will pop up. In moments of real danger, of course, I have to step in. Evan and Kelly aren't hitting it off. Their performance seems mechanical. There's something missing. Hey, out a girl, Robin. Forward. Forward. Mr. Clayton? Yes? Something wrong? You didn't praise your dog. Oh, of course. Atta girl, Kelly. Forward. Queen of spades. Nine of trump. What? <laughs> Don't bother to count them, Mr. Williams. I concede you win again. You had to teach him how to read braille cards, Mr. Ferraro. You wanted a three-handed game, Mr. Oppenheim. It's just luck. Your turns will come. Just once before I go back home. That's all I ask. Gentlemen, do we talk or do we play pinochle? Deal. 
That was very nice, Mr. Clayton. It certainly was. Uh, Thank you. Do you play professionally? No, I'm an attorney. Oh, really? In the courtroom and all? Well, I'm not exactly a Perry Mason, but yes, I'm a trial lawyer. Oh, and you're allowed to bring your dog into court? Mm hmm Oh, Jenny was always with me. <laughs> a bailiff once told me he could always tell which way the verdict would go by the way she behaved when the jury came in. Oh, what do you mean? Well, he'd watch her. And if she sat up and wagged her tail, I'd win my case. But if she just lay there and didn't move, I'd lose. <laughs> he swears she was never wrong. Oh, oh now, really? No, it's true. Oh, what a remarkable dog. Oh, the greatest, believe me. There'll never be another one like her. Oh, come on, Kelly. Do you always have to be right under my feet? Mr. Clayton mentioned his former dog very often. All the time. It's natural, I suppose. A man remembers his first dog with a special affection. Is there something wrong? Well, I've just been reading your progress report, and something puzzles me. What's that, sir? Well, I can't understand why Mr. Clayton isn't further along in his training. He's intelligent, experienced. He certainly knows what's expected of him here. Yet you grade him at the same level as Mr. Williams, a beginner. I know, that's the way I see it. Well, I'm not challenging your opinion, Mr. Howell. I merely wonder why. Is he having any trouble with his dog? Don't they work well together? Yes, they work well together. Uh, you don't sound very positive. I'm just not sure, sir. It's like the feeling that uh, there's something missing somewhere, and I can't spot it. I don't even know where to look. Any major flaws? Do you have to make many corrections? Uh, hardly any. About all I have to do is keep reminding Mr. Clayton to praise his dog. A suggestion, Mr. Howell. Use that as a signpost and look a little harder. Good night. Good night. Now the students begin to expose themselves to the many different but everyday situations they'll have to face later on when they're on their own. Chuck Williams keeps improving with every workout. He trusts Robin and she loves him. Uh, they're pretty close to the perfect seeing eye partnership. But Evan Clayton and Kelly, if anything, they're losing ground. No, Kelly, stop drifting. Straight. No, Kelly, phooey, phooey. What happened? Oh, I bumped into some kid's bike. The dog didn't leave me around it. She tried, Mr. Clayton. Well, she didn't do a very good job. There's something wrong, Mr. Howell. I'm just not getting her directions. Why, with Jenny, I always knew right away. Uh, dogs are different, Mr. Clayton. They each have their own little way of working, and you, you have to get used to them. Learn them. Well, I know that. Don't you think I'm trying? So was Kelly. I think she could use some encouragement. So could I, Mr. Howell. Kelly, forward. Come ahead, Mr. Williams. Robin, forward. Any problem, Mr. Howell? Yeah, the one I couldn't find before. Your signpost was right on target. Well, at least we know which way to go. Now don't lose your students, Mr. Howell. Yes, sir. Mr. Clayton, don't we give you enough work all day? I think we could stand some overtime, Mr. Durant. Perhaps, but not for that. For something else? Come on, Mr. Durant. I know we're not working well. What's wrong? Let me tell you about this dog, Mr. Clayton. She's like all our dogs here at Seeing Eye. She was raised by a young boy and, of course, grew to love it. Then she had to forget him and learn to love Mr. Howell. Now she has to forget Mr. Howell 
and learn to love you. And she hasn't been able to do it? She wants to, I'm sure. You see, the shepherd is a breed that instinctively needs someone to love and take care of. That's why we use it. But now Kelly doesn't have Mr. Howell any longer. She's lost, has no one to work for. What do you mean, no one? I'm her master now? But does she know that? Here, love is giving. The student and the dog give to each other. Perhaps Kelly doesn't get what she needs. Of course she does. I take care of her, good care. Taking care is doing, Mr. Clayton. Love is feeling. Look, what are you trying to tell me? That this is all my fault? You had one dog, the uh, boxer. Yes, and Jenny and I worked perfectly together. Because you loved her and showed it. Are you doing the same with Kelly? Why, of course I am. Come on, Mr. Durand, I'm not that stupid. I know what she means to me. She's my eyes. Don't you think I want to see? Of course you do. So why don't you? See you tomorrow, Mr. Durand. Kelly, forward. Mr. Duran says he wants me to watch my students closely, Mr. Clayton in particular. And I notice that more and more lately he comes along as an observer too. I know he's concerned because this is the final week of training. And soon we'll be sending the students home to cope with their problems on their own. Chuck Williams and Robin are working like a seasoned team. They can handle traffic with complete safety. They take stairways like veterans, and this is one of the toughest situations we set up for them. I notice Mr. Duran seems pleased with their progress, too. But Mr. Clayton still has problems. In some ways, he's almost as unsure as a beginner. I wish I had some magic answer for Mr. Duran, because I know it's bothering him, too. Funny thing, I don't know what this town looks like, but I bet I know it better than most people who live here. And I'm gonna miss it. Hey, Evan, you there? Yes. Well, why don't you say something? Anything special you want to hear? Oh, it's gonna be one of those days again, huh? Skip it. Good girl, Robin. Good girl. Mr. Howell, this is Maple Street, right? On the nose. Told you I know this town. Kelly, forward. Robin, forward. Good girl. Kelly, left. Good girl. Forward. Anything wrong, Mr. Williams? My shoelace is untied. You go on ahead. Oh, that's all right. Evan isn't doing too well, is he? No, he's OK. He's just got a few problems. Only one, as far as I'm concerned. Jenny. Robin, forward. I hadn't realized the situation was so obvious. But if Mr. Williams can sense it, then something has to be done, and soon. Almost hit a car. Come on, girl. Come on. Sounded like a Come on, Robin. Four. Come on. I guess it scared Robin. Yeah, it sure did. It's okay, girl. It's all over now. No, Mr. Williams, correct her. For what? She turned you into the stairway. The truck scared her. No, she has to be corrected. No, not by me. Forward, Robin. Good girl, Robin. How about a little dinner? Yeah. May I come in, Mr. Williams? Oh, sure, Mr. Durant. Come on in. Sorry to disturb you, but... 
I have to talk to you. Sure. No, no thanks. You don't sound like this is just a social call. No. Mr. Howell told me what happened this afternoon on Bank Street. Oh, well, I'm sorry if I broke the rules, but I just couldn't see bawling out Robin for a thing like that. It just wasn't her fault. No, but it was. Or to be more accurate, the fault in her makeup, her nature. <laughs> what are you talking about? Robin panicked. She lost control of herself. You're leading up to something. I'm afraid the dog will have to be replaced, Mr. Williams. Hey, now. You'll get another one. And stay on for the next class. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, I don't have any choice. You don't have... <laughs> now, what about me? I don't want another dog. I've got a dog. Robin. She's mine. She's not suitable for seeing I work. Oh, just because of some crazy noise? Because of her reaction to that noise. And you're just finding out about that now? Robin was thoroughly tested before you got her, Mr. Williams, and there was nothing wrong. It's probably a combination, everything happening at once. And it won't happen again, not in a million years. Not that, but something else, perhaps. The point is, she panicked, and she'll do it again. Next time, you could be crossing a street, she'd pull you in front of a car. You could be alone, she'd run away from you, anything. And your life might be in danger. That's my problem. No, Mr. Williams, that's my problem. I understand how you feel. We gave you the dog, encouraged you to love her. Now we're taking her away from you. It seems very cruel, but there's nothing else we can do. Yes, there is. Forget it. I'm finished training. I'm ready to leave here. Just let us go and forget it. We can't. You came to us for help. You wanted eyes, and it's our job to give them to you. You did. Well, they're not perfect. And we can't be satisfied with less. But I am. Sorry, Mr. Williams. A seeing eye dog is a working dog. If you want a pet, you can get one at any store. Doc? Hello, Mr. Clayton. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I interrupting something? No, we've finished, I think. We'll talk about this again later, Mr. Williams. See you at dinner. Mr. Durand. Yes? What'll happen to her? Now, don't worry. We'll see that she gets a good home. Chuck? What's going on? They're taking her away from me. What? Robin, they're taking her away. But why? On account of what happened this afternoon. She panicked, Duran says, and she'll do it again. I don't care. I don't care. I'm sorry, Chuck. I'm awfully sorry. They're not going to do it. She's mine. I'm keeping her. Oh, they know what's best, Chuck. Not for me, they don't. Now, you've got to go along with them. Sure, Robin's the only dog in the world for you right now, but you get over it. You'll forget her. Yeah, sure, like you're forgetting Jenny, I suppose. You're a great one to talk. has nothing to do with you. You're Kelly, and I can love you too. I do love you. Mr. Duran says you need someone. Well, so do I. We need each other. Can we start over? It's not too late. And I promise you, it'll all be different. Mr. Clayton. 
Oh, yes, Mr. Duran. I'd like to talk to you. Of course. About Kelly and me, right? Oh, yes, as a matter of fact. Your work isn't very pleasant today. Oh, these things happen. We try our best, but we make mistakes. All we can hope to do then is correct them in time. Mr. Durand, whatever went wrong between Kelly and me is my fault. Yes, for the most part. But it happened. You and the dog were mismatched. But perhaps another one more like your first, Jenny. I don't want another Jenny. There can never be another one like her. Mr. Durand, I'm not going to argue or beg. I just want one favor, time. I know where I went wrong now. Give me the time to work things out with Kelly. I'm sorry, but there's no time left. Well, the class ends on Saturday. I have till then. Mr. Clayton, simply wanting to love the dog isn't enough. You can't just put on a show. She'll know. Give me the chance to prove it to her. Up to you. But don't try to fool yourself, either. Without love, there can be no trust and no team. Just watch us. And you be the judge. Rest assured, Mr. Clayton, I will. Kelly, forward. Good girl. Atta girl, Kelly. Almost overnight, it seems, Kelly and Mr. Clayton have become a new team. The change in their performance is remarkable. Mr. Clayton seems to have recaptured the old rhythm and the old confidence. This affects Kelly, too. Now she feels important and needed. She's working with someone who knows what he's doing, someone who seems to appreciate what she's doing. We're out on the streets at every opportunity in all kinds of weather, climbing stairways practically two at a time. I've never seen such determination. And I have to admit, I'm the one having a hard time keeping up. Hey, Mr. Clayton. Hey, it's starting to rain. I think we better call it a day. Oh, we were just getting warmed up. Uh, you don't have to prove anything more to me. Well, OK. Up, up, Kelly. Since the both of us getting soaked, I'll get the car. You wait in one of these stores. Now wait. Drop your harness and take my arm. Come on. Oh, wouldn't you know? Closed for the weekend. No, it's going to be okay. You're underneath an awning, so stay here. Whatever you say. All right, I'll be back as fast as I can. Sure, glad 
to see you. I got a flat tire. Well, it'd be best to leave him there. I can move faster alone. You did the right thing, Mr. Howell. The store's right up this block. car and they couldn't have gone far. We should have reached the park long before this. You know something, girl? I think we're lost. Kelly. Up, up, girl. Maybe they're inside somewhere. Well, I hope so. It's dangerous to be out on this. for your patience, for giving me that extra chance. Good luck. You keep in touch now. I will. Evan? Chuck? So long. I work hard with that new dog. Well, I'm trying. But after Robin, it's a little rough. You'll do it. If the dogs can, so can we. It's always easier. Excuse me, Mr. Clayton. There's a lot of traffic on the way to the airport. Right. Goodbye. Well, that's a story of my first dog, Kelly. A story that will always have a sort of special flavor for me. She and Mr. Clayton are a well-matched team, the kind we all try for at the seeing eye. Come. Come, Kelly. Come. Good. Good girl. Yeah. yeah. Makes me feel good that she's made it. In a way, I guess, I'm like Mr. Clayton with Jenny. I don't suppose I'll ever really forget her. We'll hear from them from time to time. We always do. And with Kelly, I know it'll always be good news. a girl, Kelly. a girl, Kelly. And so Kelly learned to love her blind master. Remarkable animals, the C&I dogs, all of them. And we are glad to have been able to pay them this tribute.